Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is French Onion Soup. Well, I hope you guys are ready for a real winter warmer because today we're making French onion soup, which to me has always seemed like such a luxurious soup with the rich beef broth, those caramelized onions, and especially the toasted baguette with melted Gruyere cheese all over the top. And it's funny because these onion soups date way back. Like ancient Rome, they'd make onion soups because onions were plentiful and cheap and that's what the poor people ate. Now of course the soup that we're familiar with today is French onion. They say it originated in Paris, France which makes sense and then here in the States became much more popular in like the 60s when people really got interested in French cuisine. Uh, now that's all fun to know uh, but what you're really here to find out is how to make it yourself at home. Uh, and I'll tell you that this soup really has three main components. There's the beef stock or broth that we're gonna put together. There's the caramelized onions themselves. And of course, that cheesy baguette toasted right there on the top. And we're gonna hit all of those today, but we gotta get started with a little knife work. So for our caramelized onions today, we're using sweet yellow onions. You could use all kinds of different onions, depending on what you like. Um, but this is, this is my choice, the sweet yellow onion and you're gonna need a lot of them. Uh, you might have guessed that, but about five pounds for this recipe we're doing today. Now we're taking off the top and the bottom, and we're gonna cut them from pole to pole, and then we're gonna slice them super thin. Now you're going to be chopping for a little while here, so I highly recommend putting on some gloves if you got them. Otherwise, your hands are probably going to smell like onions for hours. Now once we get our onions caramelized down, we're also going to add some garlic to them. It'll be a while from now, but we're going to go ahead and knock out all the knife work here up front. And the garlic just needs to be minced up nice and small. Now for the beef stock, we've got some parsley here. This is about half a bunch of parsley, just the stems, a lot of flavor in those. Obviously a bunch of thyme, I love thyme, and then a couple bay leaves. Now we're also going to need some celery and carrot. Now there's no onion in the stock, which seems kind of strange, but when you consider that there's already five pounds of onion in the soup, it's kind of unnecessary in the stock. Now the carrots, we can just kind of do a larger dice on. Same with the celery. You probably want about three quarters to one cup of each. Now that's gonna do it for all the knife work, so let's head over to the grill. Now today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. We're running it at 450 degrees with kind of a unique setup. Get in here, I'll show you what we're doing. Now we've got the diffuser plate in, but the door removed so we can get direct heat on the left side here. We're gonna start by preheating the larger of the Dutch ovens for the caramelized onions, because we're really gonna fill that up. And then the smaller ones where we're gonna build our stock. The Dutch ovens have had about five minutes to preheat now. We're gonna start by getting some fat down where we're gonna do our onion caramelizing, starting with a quarter cup of unsalted butter. And we're also gonna do a quarter cup of beef tallow to really beef up this recipe. So fat's all melted down, bubbling up a bit. We're gonna add our onions. Now a little bit of salt will help draw some of the moisture out and break these down faster. We're actually gonna hit these with the seasoning, the our butts are smoking, our beef rub. Just a, a really nice savory flavored rub. Great for briskets, great for beef. Gonna be great in our French onion soup. So just wanna move this around enough to get all those onions coated in the seasoning and the fat. And then we're gonna let these Cook down kind of gently, we'll move them to the other side of the grill here. Now really the only way to do caramelized onions right is to give them time. We're not going to add any sugar to them or anything like that. We just want them to cook down naturally, start to brown, and it's going to take a while. So we're going to switch these around at this point. And right here's where we're gonna be building our beef stock. But before we put everything in here, I just wanna get a little bit of color on this beef short rib that we're using in the beef stock today to add all this extra beefy flavor. We'll leave this right over the fire for probably about five minutes, just turning it to start to brown and add some extra depth of flavor 
to our beef stock. All right, so we've given this beef short rib a little bit of time to get a nice sear on it. That's a good way to start developing some flavor. We don't need all this extra fat in here in our broth, so I'm gonna pour that off right now, but we've still got some good fond in the bottom to work with. So we'll return that back to the Dutch oven and add the rest of our ingredients. And essentially what we're doing here is we're going to fortify an already existing beef stock with a bunch of extra flavors to form our beef broth for the soup. So in with the carrots and the celery, in with our bay leaves, thyme, parsley. We're gonna do about a tablespoon here, of black peppercorns, and then our liquids. Now I've got two quarts of just store-bought unsalted beef stock. We're gonna add that to the Dutch oven. We're looking to produce about two quarts of broth or stock in the end. So we're gonna add more than that now as it will reduce down while it cooks. From here, you could top this off with water, but I happen to have some of my dry aged beef stock left over from our prime rib video, which you guys can go check out. And there's tons of great flavor in there. So we'll add that two cups and then another two cups of water. Now this is gonna go back to the grill, get covered, and we'll bring it up to a simmer and just let it cook right alongside those onions. We're about an hour into our cook here. I just wanted to give you guys a little progress report so you can see what's going on inside the grill. So once we got this stock up to a simmer, I just kind of moved it off to the side so it wouldn't be boiling the whole time. We just want a nice gentle simmer at this point, and that's looking really good. Our onions, you can see, have cooked down quite a bit. Got some water standing in here that's cooked out of those onions, starting to get a little bit of color. And they've been over here on the far side for the full hour now. We can actually go ahead and move these over. We just get a little bit more heat on this pan to help move these along, but be really careful if you do move these over the direct flame. You gotta really keep an eye on them to make sure that they don't scorch. But if you are leaving them off, the indirect heat in that right side of the grill, just stir them every 10 or 15 minutes or so in your good shape. We'll let these cook down just a little bit before we move them away from the flame once again. And it's kind of going to be that game until they're all the way cooked, all the way caramelized. But these onions have been cooking for two and a half hours now and the caramelization is looking fantastic. So we're going to get in here, take a look at the onions, and at the same time we're going to get the stock off the grill so we can go ahead and strain it and get ready to make our soup. So you can see we've got that great caramelized color going on these onions. It really melted down. We're gonna leave these on the grill. They're doing just fine. You can stay here and hang out. I'm gonna get into this stock though. So just sitting there just below a simmer. Oh my gosh, it smells incredible. Let's go ahead and get this out of here. I'm gonna fish this beef rib out of here first. And then we'll go ahead and run this through the chinois strainer. So I mentioned we were trying to go for two quarts. We overreduced a little bit, which is fine because we can top this up with some water. It's still going to have tons of flavor. Now we've got this beef rib left here, and I know typically a French onion soup's not going to have actual beef in it, but we just braised the thing. We might as well pull it apart and throw some of that shredded beef into the soup along with everything else. Gosh. Look at the way that's rendered down inside. That's amazing. So now we're ready to really start building this soup. First thing we're gonna do is add in our garlic and we'll let that cook for just a couple minutes just to kind of cook the raw out of it. So the next thing we're going to do is add a half cup of dry sherry. This is kind of a, a fortified wine, but incredible aroma to it. And we're just going to move this right over the flame here 
And we're gonna cook that until most of that liquid has disappeared. So now looking at this, as we draw the spoon through, you can see really not much liquid standing in the bottom. So now we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of flour just to help thicken things up. It's not entirely necessary for this recipe, but I do like that it gives the soup a little bit more body, considering that it's mostly just a broth with onions. So given that just a couple minutes here to cook out that flour, now we're ready to add our stock. So two quarts of beef stock. And we're also gonna throw in a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Now this we need to come up to a simmer. And while that's happening, we're gonna toast off our baguette. I almost forgot all that shredded beef short rib. Let's go ahead and throw that in there too. Let it warm up with everything else. So we kind of want to treat this baguette as a crouton. And for that reason, this is actually a baguette that's been sitting out for a day already. So it's already kind of crusty. Uh, we're going to cut this to try and fit right on the top of our soup crocks. So we'll slice a couple here and see if we're on the right track. Kind of want these to be able to just sit right on top of that lip. We're pretty close. I mean, that'll definitely work once that's filled with soup. Now, this batch that we're making today, it'll yield about 10 one cup servings. So one baguette should get you all you need. Before we toast these off in the grill, I'm just gonna hit them with a little bit of olive oil. Kinda toss that around and it doesn't have to be fully coated, just a little bit of olive oil on the surface. And then we'll transfer them to a sheet pan. All right, let's run this over to the grill. So we're gonna throw these on the right side of the grill here. The soup simmering away, looking really good. So this soup's been simmering away for a good 15 minutes now. I feel like the consistency is right where we want it. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. We'll take it back to the table so we can taste for seasoning. And then we'll just wait on these baguette toasts to finish. Oh man. That's crazy sweet from those sweet onions. Beefiness, the depth of flavor. We can maybe give it just a little sprinkle of salt, but I don't want to change much. Now our baguettes have come off of the grill. So we're ready to get these into our soup crocks and finish them off with the crouton and the cheese. We'll do about one cup servings here. Should bring us right up to that lip. We've got two slices of baguette on top. And then a really generous helping of Gruyere cheese. So Kava gets around to the edges and kind of melts to the crock. Now we just need to get these finished off under the heat. And you've got a couple of options there. But today we're gonna finish these off in the auto wild, which is an over the top broiler. We typically use super high heat to sear steaks, uh, but we can actually run that a little bit lower and it's gonna do exactly what we need it to, just like a salamander would in a restaurant. Uh, at home, you're welcome to just throw these on a sheet pan put it in your oven and put it under the broiler until the cheese is melted and browned on top. Or even easier than that, you can just take a propane torch and torch the top. So we'll go ahead and fire the auto wild up. And once you've got ignition, we'll go ahead and turn that down to low. That's what I'm talking about. That browning on top, nice and toasty. Let's go ahead and take these out. 
right. Before we can get a complete bite of this, we've got to get that crouton just submerged, soaking up that French onion. Try that. Woo! That makes me happy. Oh, that bread's got a really nice crunch to it. It's a day old already, then we toast it. It gives it all the texture you need to be able to soak up the soup and still have bite to it. But, of course, the soup itself, so beefy. You know, we kind of doctored a stock. We really fortified something that already existed, but it took us all the way. It did everything we needed and added so much flavor. Onions are so sweet. I know I said it before, but overall, fantastic. Really warms your soul. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.